Hi guys and uh, welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be reviewing the AirBot RAF32 ESC. Now this is a 32-bit ESC and it, it does run BL Heli 32 so that's the shot 1200 and soon to be changed to ProShot. If you guys haven't heard of ProShot go look it up it's a new thing someone's optimized DShot to run a bit more efficient so that's very good anyways that's not the topic so right now this is rocking a cortex m0 uh microcontroller right here so this is what allows us to run dshot 1200 it's a 32-bit esc and it's pretty fast so today we're going to be reviewing it for noise voltage spikes and voltage drops and before we begin, let's just talk a little bit about the, the, the ESC itself. Now, this is how I got it. That's it. I just got it in a small bag, and uh, it doesn't come with anything. This is this is all I got, just like that. So here we would have where your motors connect, and you can do this on both sides, which is awesome. And uh, it does have an RGB LED, which is programmable through BL Heli 32. I have not connected it yet, but when I plugged it in, it was turning, I think, green, which is pretty awesome. Um, it has one tantalum capacitor. This will reduce some of the high frequency noise, which is always good to see. And um, the 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 tab the pads for the ground and uh, signal are very small. So if you do have a uh, if solder with flux in it, I really I really recommend you clean that off because I almost burnt it because uh, I I didn't really see it, see it in the middle because of the way the light was shining. So I'd recommend you clean it off before you actually plug it in. Um, and then you have your ground and positive for power and also you can do it on both sides. Now it also does have a current uh, shunt resistor for current reading so it does provide current reading which is absolutely awesome and it just has a couple capacitors here. So we have around four capacitors and here we have a little coil so inductor uh, so this just this should help with something so this is going to be very interesting actually and what else we talked about this we have a diode now, this little diode can be used is possibly used as a protection for just in case you uh, short circuit something possibly not for sure i don't guarantee you but that's what usually they're used for um what else do we have here a couple capacitors nothing much really that's it so let's take it on the bench and check this baby out All right, guys, so you just saw that. Now, the conclusion of what I have saw and just figured out that actually I had to push this guy a little bit more than others because he was holding up pretty well. Uh, noise, there was noise. Nothing is perfect. You'll always see noise in the ESC. It's just the amount of noise. And what to concentrate on is also the voltage spikes and the voltage drops. Voltage spikes will blow up your things. Voltage drops will give you blackouts. So... <clears throat> the voltage drop was very good on the worst case scenario the worst like the hardest test I ran on it it reached 12.2 volts that is the worst it reached which is absolutely phenomenal uh, it was averaging between 13 and 14 volts which is I haven't seen an ESC do that yet so this is a very good ESC uh, voltage spikes it reached 20 on average but then I, the, the max when I pushed it the hardest it reached 23.8 volts so that is also very good because most VTXs will run between 7 and 24 volts so that is in the safe zone this is very good uh, noise the higher frequencies were getting filtered out through this tantalum capacitor and some other capacitors in here uh, however there was some noise but um, I believe it's very manageable like you could just add one low ESR capacitor on your battery terminals and it would clear it up um, don't forget you also have a current resistor here which is you could limit your current and then uh, you could reduce the risk of blowing your motor anything out even these out so which is also very good 
Uh, these four capacitors, however, I wish they would have added like maybe eight. I think that would have been very nice. Uh, possibly would have been the best ESC out in the market right now. Um, but other than that, it does perform. Uh, it is in the high end range of ESCs, and I and I really do like this. However, I've also noticed something which is absolutely phenomenal. Uh, I've heard how smooth the motors run on such like something like a T motor F30 amp and the um, DYS XS 30 amp, and this was just running even smoother. I didn't I, I didn't even know there's something even smoother. It was just like butter. It was just crazy. So that says a lot. That that says the the timing within. It's just it's overall overall it's built built very well. So, um, I am impressed. Um, the testing through my testing environment, I say it passed. I see that it passed, and um, now what will be left for us is to put it on a build and actually really go for a flight. I'm planning on putting on the HDLRC F4 flame because uh, the VTX. Uh, power is from the battery but filtered so if i connect this with that and a noisy motor and we can really see how good they are um overall i am impressed i'm very happy i got these i'm very happy i listened to you guys and i really cannot wait to put this on a quad um what else some downsides to this flight controller i mean this esc is it doesn't come with anything you know no wires no nothing i wish they added some silicone wires or something in here but nothing, this is how you get it, that's it. No sticker, no heat shrink, nothing. That's fine, I mean, if it's gonna perform and it's gonna do good, I don't have a problem with that. I'm more than happy to get a couple more. <clears throat> so as of right now, from the testing point standpoint, point of view, um, this seems like a very good ESC. I, I would choose this over the uh, T-Motor any day, uh, T-Motor F30 amp ESC any day. Uh, which is in the same price points and uh, i would definitely go for this guy um, i mean you have so many things you know you have your rgb led i don't really care about it but you will have it. it's there if you want to use it you have uh, some kind of protection here and then you got your uh, shunt resistor your current limiter and current reading um so this is definitely uh much better i think it's what like two dollars or a dollar more this one um so yeah i would definitely choose this over the t motor um and that's really it guys so um it did perform i was impressed and now all we have to do is take it on of quad and take it for a flight so yeah just wait on that i might try to have the build uh done today and uh we'll probably put the emax 2306 motors on this guy and really take him out for uh, a hard flight and see how good it is um and that's gonna conclude it for this video guys so i really hope it i really hope it helped you guys and uh, if you guys have any suggestions or any comments, just feel free to let me know. And go ahead and check out my Facebook page. Uh, give it a like. I'm always updating it. You guys can see my what, what I'm receiving and what I'm planning on doing. And when I'm setting up, I put some pictures up. So it's just like a behind-the-scenes thing if you guys want to check it out. And if you comment, I, I'm, I always reply. I'm just always on it. So, um, yeah. So that's it, guys. If you guys have any suggestions or any comments, just feel free to let me know. And I will see you next time. See you, guys.